Hey everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for phase 1 general awareness. I hope all of you are doing well and preparing hard for your examination. I know that the notification of the exam is not coming out so it may be a demotivating factor for all of you. But don't get disheartened my friends because this is the golden opportunity for all of you to edge past your competitors. If you are really studying hard then definitely you will prove yourself as the but this time will prove your prove itself as an asset for all of you okay so don't uh, just relax don't think like ki notification nahi aa raha hai to pad ke kya hi fayda bhul jayenge agar hum abhi padhenge aur notification 4 mahine baad aayega don't think like that because whatever you are spending on your education that is an investment okay and this is going to give you a high return so invest in your studies study hard now in line with that only i have brought to you this monthly current affairs session in which i am going to take top 100 questions from the month of march so quickly begin the session okay oh Okay, so the first question guys is about the recent amendments done in the MP LAD scheme. I hope all of you are aware of that. So guys, out of those several uh, amendments, one of the most important amendment was the change in the limit of the minimum amount which can be spent on a particular project. Okay, now what the ma'am is speaking, right? <laughs> Some of you must be thinking like that, but don't think like that. I'm telling you the basic idea of the scheme and what does it mean so basically under the mp lad scheme a member of parliament is given rupees 5 crore as budget to spend on its on his or her constituency okay for development project okay now this is the 5 crore limit which is given to the member of parliament as a wholesome amount and if they want to construct a particular project okay for example a uh, water improvement project is there drinking water project is there so for one particular project the amount which can be spent is rupees 2.5 lakh now so option d is the right answer earlier this limit was rupees 1 lakh now it has been increased to rupees 2 lakh but the overall limit of the scheme is rupees 5 crore only okay Okay, so the second question is the, that recently the union cabinet approved the extension of the term of the 22nd Law Commission of India of up to dash. So 31st August 2024 is the right answer. Now do remember that uh, this commission was uh, created in 2022 and now this commission's tenure has been extended and this person is Justice Rituraj Avasti who is the current chairperson of the 22nd Law Commission. But have you ever thought what is the Law Commission? Law Commission guys is first of all a non-statutory body okay that means it is not created out of any act. Secondly it is an advisory body which is created under the Ministry of Law and Justice. Now, what is the purpose? Why is it created? The purpose is to do research on the current laws, whether any amendment is needed in the law or not. So that kind of research is done by the Law Commission and the report is submitted to the Ministry of Law and Justice on which the Ministry takes appropriate measures and do the amendments, okay? So the tenure of this Law Commission has now been extended up to 31st August 2024 so it can submit its report till then okay so uh, these are the facts related to the Law Commission now guys 1955 was the year in which the first Law Commission was created so my question from you all is can you tell me that who was the first chairperson of the first Law Commission of India so this is your task do not forget to mention your answers in the comment section because i eagerly wait for all of you to answer and comment and i go through the through each and every comment and reply to them okay so if you want to connect with me if you want to uh, score better i would recommend all of you to mention the answer in the comment section uh, because that will help you in engaging more with the session and merely listening to what i am saying is not going to help you in retaining these facts okay you have to put an effort from your side as well okay question number three is about this INS Nirakshak okay so this ship has got an award for 
uh, for uh, undertaking the sea diving and rescue operations in most challenging situations. So the question is about that when was this ship commissioned into the Indian Navy? So it is in 1985 uh, in which this ship was commissioned. In February 2023, the NSC Indices Limited launched India's first municipal bond index. Now, the municipal bond index is going to track the performance of municipal bonds which have been launched in India so far. Okay, this municipal bond index is going to track the performance of dash municipal bonds issued by the 10 issuers as, as of now. Okay, and all these bonds are rated AA that means it is a good investment instrument okay now you have to tell me how many uh, municipal bonds are there on this index so here the right answer is option D a total of 28 bonds are listed on this municipal bond index okay guys I have told you this fact many times that Bangalore was the first city to launch the municipal bond for the first time then Pune in 2017 launched it with the help of US aid then Vadodara in 2022 launched it with the help of US aid again and became the second city to launch the municipal bonds okay and now in 2023 March we are seeing that a total of 28 municipal bonds have been issued okay uh, by the 10 issuing agencies so there are different issuing agencies as well okay god knows uh, that how which agencies have launched these municipal bonds because sometimes in news we need to understand this thing that we get one data at one point of time and the data entirely changes after a month or a week or also and that the changed data appears very different okay for example look at this news only in 2022 we had Vadodara becoming the second city to launch the municipal bond in with the help of the USAID and now in 2023 March we have a total of 28 municipal bonds in India okay which are investable so that is the lacuna I have found in the current affairs and you have to adjust with it with it many a times you will find in spotlight that on one page you will find a news and after 10 page down you will find the follow-up of that news only that happens I try to minimize that thing by comprising the magazine by doing the editing of the magazine but uh, but that thing happens okay because sometimes the news are of such nature okay in that case what is the solution for all of you the solution is that you need to remember these things separately okay don't try to connect the dots when there is no need of that okay let's move to the next question who has been appointed as a drug controller general of india so rajiv raguvanshi is the right answer a very important position is uh, it is okay the next question is how many pairs are matched correctly with respect to the disease elimination targets of india okay so read the question carefully it is asking you how many pairs and not which pair okay that is why i always say and not only me every mentor on every platform says this thing that you need to first read the question carefully okay and then pick out the keywords and then answer Okay, so here the keyword is how many pairs, not which pair. So let's look at the pairs. So these are the pairs. Out of these pairs, uh, tuberculosis target, lymphatic phalaresis, malaria. These three are the correct. So what would be the right answer? The right answer is only three. Option C is the right answer. So here, guys, leprosy was eliminated from India back in the year 2005. But if you see the news articles and if you see the ground reality, then leprosy has not been eliminated from India. There are many cases of leprosy uh, in India, especially in West Bengal and the Bhimaru region of India. Okay, Bihar, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh. Okay, so this is the region Bhimaru in india where you would find leprosy cases a lot okay a major burden of leprosy cases now colors are uh, elimination target is 2023 so the current year is the target and this makes this disease very important you can be asked a question on this tb 2025 
लिम्फेटिक फेलोरिस और एलिफेंटाइसिस uh, 2027 ग्लोबल टारगेट इज 2030 मलेरिया 2030 एड्स एपिडेमिक 2030 ओके सो रिमेंबर दीज आर दी एलिमिनेशन टारगेट्स यू मस्ट हैव रेड सम ऑन सम वेबसाइट दैट डिजीज इराडिगेशन इज आल्सो मेंशनड बट हैव यू एवर वंडर्ड दैट इज देयर एनी डिफरेंस बिटवीन डिजीज एलिमिनेशन एंड डिजीज इराडिगेशन गाइस देयर इज अ डिफरेंस द डिफरेंस इज दैट एलिमिनेशन pertains to a particular region or nation okay so if we say that india has a target of eliminating the disease by 2023 that means it is pertaining to a particular region okay so all these are the elimination targets whereas eradication pertains to the global level okay so when we say that this disease has been eradicated that means it has been eradicated from the entire globe now the interesting fact here is that there is only one disease in the entire history of human race which has been eradicated and that disease is smallpox apart from this every disease is somewhere eliminated or uh, under control in some regions okay so these are the targets now one more thing which i want to tell you here with respect to this uh, entire thing the thing is that why are we discussing about it the thing the reason behind this is this so here guys sarv seva abhiyan that is multi drug ab administration campaign was organized by the ministry of health for the lymphatic filariasis patients okay so that is the news because of which the question was made and these targets are in front of you okay so here please connect the dot that the question the news is about the sarv seva abhiyan that is this multi uh, this drug administration program for the particular disease but the question has been asked from you for many diseases okay so this highlights the importance of covering the important targets okay of the government of india and up adopting an integrated approach for tackling the questions okay moving on to the next question where was the barisu kannada dim diva dimava cultural festival organized to celebrate the karnataka's culture under the ek bharat shreshth bharat vision of the prime minister so delhi guys is the right answer dash and dash will become the first foreign universities to set up their campuses in india in gujarat's gift city so university of volangong and daikin university are the right answer now guys your ifsc examination is just around the uh, is very near to all of you so do remember this question you can expect this question to be in your examination okay okay so now we have a very lengthy question union ministry of fisheries and animal husbandry purushottam rupala launched the phase 2 of national surveillance program for aquatic animal diseases the phase 2 of this program has been launched under the pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana the government has launched the mission in dash for strengthening the farmer based disease surveillance system the objective is to ensure that diseases are reported immediately investigated and farmer receive scientific assistance the results of the first phase proved the reduction in revenue losses due to diseases increased farmers incomes and exports the phase 2 will be implemented at pan india level and at and in all states <coughs> fisheries departments along with dash so here you can clearly see first of all the question is very lengthy okay so i know many of the students deploy this trick of reading the main things only okay ki dash ke pass wala portion pad lete hain then we will gather what is the question okay in case you can do so because this question is also a little bit simple okay here the this statement only is giving you the hint of the question is entirely giving you the question itself so in such type of questions you can do that but i would recommend all of you to avoid doing such a thing because what happens that uh, if you have read this much portion only and the question is not clear from this much portion then you will have to read the entire paragraph again and then it will create a chaos and you will have anxiety as well. एनजाइटी और ये कह लो कि पैनिक सिचुएशन तो एग्जामिनेशन हॉल में होती ही है आपकी ओके सो अवॉइड अडोप्टिंग द शॉर्ट ट्रिक्स 
in the examination tricks are important but shortcuts are not going to lead you anywhere okay so read the proper question carefully don't try to uh, cut short here so now coming back to the answer of this question so firstly the question is asking you the launch year so 2013 is the launch year and the nodal agency for implementing this program is MPDA that is Marine Product Export Development Authority which is under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry okay and the basic purpose of MPDA is to improve the quality of the seafood so that we can increase the export numbers okay now my question from all of you is you have to tell me the current chairperson of MPDA in the comment section below even even if you are not telling me the name of the chairperson do search it out for yourself only okay question number 10 is what is the corpus of genetic improvement program of penis indicus phase one scheme so 25 crore is the right answer now do remember guys that this scheme has been launched under the pradhan mantri matasya sampada yojana okay now we are talking about shrimps this scheme is particularly for the indian white shrimps and in order to improve their genetic uh, in order to improve their quality this program has been launched so let's have a look at the indian marine products and their exports so guys first of all look at this this is indian white shrimp which we were talking about and as far as india's marine exports are concerned so let me tell you that out of the total exports majority over over 50 percent of the exported product is shrimps only okay so shrimps uh, hold a very important position as far as india's marine exports are concerned us is the topmost uh, importer of india's marine products and china is the second most uh, i would say second largest importer of india's seafood Okay. Now, as far as the export target of seafood is concerned, then India has put a target of $14 billion by 2025. Okay. And India is the third largest fish and aquaculture producing country with 7.96% of global fish production. Okay. That much is the contribution of India in the global fish production. These are very important data facts. And guys, this uh, link which I have provided here gives you a very detailed view of india's marine products and the ecosystem in itself so if you get time to spend it on this website because it is going to tell you india's ex marine exports india's uh, schemes which are there for improving the marine products and their export so everything is there spend a little bit of time on this as well Next question is which state has established India's first government mother milk bank for orphan children? So here guys Uttarakhand is the right answer. How much is India's real GDP estimate for 2022 to 2023 as per the latest second advance estimate of the national income for 2022 to 2023? Chale, isi baat pe ek basic question aap se main. And that question is can you tell me that which ministry releases this data? Is it Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Commerce, Ministry of Statistics, Ministry of Labor? So which ministry is this? Okay. So this is your question. Do find it out and tell me. Now coming back to the question, the answer here is 159.71 trillion rupee. Rupee. Okay. Pay attention to this fact. Now guys, here is a snapshot of our GDP. So GDP is calculated in two forms. First is GDP at factor cost and GDP at market co market price. Within the GDP at market price, we have two types of GDPs. That is real GDP and nominal GDP. So I hope if you connect the current affairs with the background information like I have done here in this slide, it will really help you in retaining the facts as well as it will clear your conceptual understanding as well. Okay, so now you will understand why do we compare the prices of the uh, goods? Okay, why do we compare the GDPs of one year with the previous year? Okay, on the basis of prices. Okay real gdp guys is the gdp at constant prices okay and nominal gdp is the gdp at current price for example if we talk about the nominal gdp of fi 
19 and the nominal GDP of FY22, then we are undertake we are taking the prices, the current prices of these years into account. And obviously, due to inflation, the prices must have changed. Therefore, it may happen that the GDP of this year, the nominal GDP of this year, would increase, and we will find that our GDP has increased. But that is not the case. It is just a change in the prices. That is why we take into account the real GDP or GDP at constant prices. Okay. So here also we undertake, uh, we take into consideration the market price, but the market price is not changing every year or every time we are calculating the GDP. We have taken a base year and on the basis of that we calculate the increment in GDP. So do you know which base year do we use at present to calculate our GDP? The year is 2011-12. Okay, there were discussions among the government ministries or the officials that we should change this base year to 2017 but right now no change has been solidified. So 2011-12 is the base year for calculation of GDP at constant prices and it is the real GDP which we undertake, uh, which we take into consideration. I don't know why I am constantly saying the word undertake, undertake, but it's into taking into consideration, okay. Uh, now we have discussed this basic phenomena, now I am going to show you the forecast. So real GDP that is GDP at constant price for FY23 would be 159.71 trillion. It may increase or decrease with the due course of time but that we will see at the end of this year when the revised estimates will come. It, these are the advanced estimates okay. Abhi to saal khatam bhi nahi hua tha jab ye release kiya gaya tha okay. Real gross value added at basic prices for FY22 to 23, these are 147.12 trillion. Okay, then nominal GDP for FY23 increment. Dekho aap. The GDP growth rate is always about the real GDP. Okay, and this is the nominal GDP growth rate, and you can clearly see the increment. It is here, it is 7%, and here it is 15.9%. It has almost doubled because it is taking inflation into consideration. Then nominal GDP for FY23, the amount is 272.04 trillion and you can clearly see the difference. Then nominal GVA at basic price is 247.07 trillion. Okay, so these are the estimates which you need to remember until or unless you have a new estimate come up for the year. Okay. Moving on to the next question, according to the Department of Pharmaceuticals data, the Pradhan Mantri Bharati Jan Aushadi Pari Yojana has achieved the sales of more than dash in the current financial year which has further led to the saving, uh, savings of approximately dash to the citizens under the scheme. Under the scheme, generic medicines available are priced 50 to 90 percent lower than branded offerings. Product basket has been increased to 1759 drugs generic and 280 surgical instruments. Okay, so you have to tell the amount of sales and the savings to uh, savings of the citizens because of this scheme. Okay, now you would find that this kind of data is first of all very irritating to learn and secondly it is very I would say frequent. Okay, such kind of data are very much in number and they frequently change. So do you need to remember them? Guys, if you ask my opinion then I would say that yes, because this data is related to a scheme and such type of questions are often asked in your phase one as well as phase two exams. Okay, now coming back to the answer. What is the answer? Answer is option E. 1100 crore worth of sales were done under the scheme and 6600 crores worth of savings uh, were ensured by the scheme and these savings are of the citizens. If the scheme would not be there then the citizens would have to spend this much amount to buy the medicines. Okay, So it is almost six times the savings. Who is the chair of Supreme Court's expert committee to investigate the causes of regulatory failure which led to the investors losing crores following the Hindenburg research report? A lot of ruckus was created when this report came out on Adani Group and how, did, how this uh, report has 
led to the failure in investors trust in the market and how uh, it led to the loss of crore of crores of rupees this is the task of this expert committee which has been constituted by the supreme court okay so that is the unique point here it is not sebi which is creating such a committee to undertake the research it is supreme court which is creating this committee and the head of this committee is a judge so who is the person the person is justice abhay manohar sapri recently the ministry of home affairs has cancelled the foreign contribution regulation act license of the dash so what is the right answer the right answer is center for policy research which is a very prominent think tank in india and now its license for the fakra that is foreign contribution regulation act has been cancelled okay so it means that now it won't be uh, able to receive the foreign contribution easily because license he cancel okay what is the theme of the 8th raisina dialogue so provocation uncertainty turbulence lighthouse in the tempest the uh, this was the theme okay now we are talking about the raisina dialogue can any one of you tell me who was the chief guest of the event where is porthekra medicinal plant found in india so here guys assam is the right answer this plant was there in the news there was nothing much significant around this plant it was just that that the plant came into the news that is why this question is here okay so sometimes it is in our mentality that we need to focus more on the schemes or the news of national importance and if something new and productive has happened only then we will pay attention to that but guys you need to change that mentality because such type of questions are also asked in the examination and this does not sound any uh, this question does not uh, seem like ridiculous or irrelevant this question appears very relevant from your exams perspective so change your view point okay adapt to the changing pattern of the examination next question is recently iit guwahati has signed an mou with samagra shiksha assam under the rashtriya avishkar abhiyan to develop scientific tempo and strengthen students ability to handle challenge challenging environments the rashtriya avishkar abhiyan was launched in dash by the late apj abdul kalam former president of india the abhiyan will target students in the age group of dash and in turn the execution of the scheme will span across the mhrds schematic interventions of sarva shiksha abhiyan okay now it is ministry of education but still now what is the year of this rashtriya shiksha the rashtriya avishkar abhiyan and what age group does this scheme target so clearly it is a very uh, core government scheme question and from the level of the question or the pattern of the question you can assess that government scheme se kafi in depth question phase 1 mein bhi puche jate hain aapke rbi ke exam mein okay so government scheme is a very integral and very important topic for your exam so prepare the topic thoroughly prepare government schemes very thoroughly keep a track of every change that come in the government schemes or every news which is related to the government scheme bhale hi wo chahe koi bekar sa event hi kyun na kiya ho us scheme se related but aapko pata hona chahiye कि वो इवेंट कहां पर हुआ है बिकॉज यू डोंट नो कि क्या पता वहीं से क्वेश्चन बन के आ जाए राइट ओके कमिंग बैक टू द आंसर सो द आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी 2015 इज द ईयर इन विच द स्कीम वाज लॉन्च्ड एंड 6 टू 18 इयर्स ऑफ चिल्ड्रन आर बीइंग टारगेटेड बाय द स्कीम which country has launched the senior uh, senior mission leaders course to prepare senior personnel for future roles and responsibilities as mission leaders in united nations peacekeeping operations enabling them to plan manage lead such missions so guys japan is the right answer japan has launched this senior mission leaders course okay so there is nothing much zyada isme dimag lagane ki zarurat nahi hai you just need to remember two keywords here japan and senior mission leaders course that much is sufficient and as far as international current affairs are concerned so zyada uh, in depth questions usme se waise bhi nahi puche jate aapse theek hai next question is how much penalty 
penalty has been imposed on the multi commodity exchange by sebi for violating regulations pertaining to data entries of sikkim based clients okay rupees 6 lakh is the right answer now i know you must be thinking why ma'am has started laughing over this question the reason is the irritability of this question because i personally don't like the questions which ask the amount of penalties kyunki penalties bahut sari hoti hai aur bahut zyada lagai jati hai theek hai sebi bhi bahut sari lagata hai and this is one of the penalties imposed by sebi only and rbi bhi bahut sari penalties banks pe nbfcs pe aur pata nahi kis kis pe lagata hai theek hai so i know that this type of question is a little not little but very irritating so what you can do here यू कैन क्रिएट अ फैक्ट चीट शीट पहले सुन लो आगे मत करना इस चीज़ को बिकॉज आई नो कि मैं ये चीज़ बार बार बोलती हूँ फैक्ट चीट शीट क्रिएट करो सो यू गाइज हैव ऑलरेडी गट गॉट एन आइडिया ऑफ इट बट यहाँ पर मैं कुछ डिफरेंट बोलने वाली हूँ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल क्रिएट अ फैक्ट चीट शीट और अ लिस्ट ऑफ सच पेनल्टीज फॉर द पास्ट सिक्स मंथ्स ओके एंड डोंट ट्राई टू मग अप दीज पेनल्टीज एज ऑफ नाउ when your examination will come you just need to know the penalties of the current month in which the exam is taking place okay to past past 6 months ki penalties ko yaad rakhna zaruri nahi hai just remember the penalties of the current months because you don't know when the examination will come so it would be better in your favor only if you have the list of the penalties imposed by various regulators on different agencies in your hand okay that is why i told you to create a list for yourself for penalties particularly okay and when the examination will come current month plus one month previous two month ki penalties ko yaad rakh kar lena that would be sufficient hmm. next question is where has the minister of youth affairs and sports and information and broadcasting anurag singh thakur launched the yuva utsav india at 2047 topar guys is the right answer which is in punjab now the exact place is the iit topar theek hai and the basic idea of this yuva utsav is to tap the talent who is the md of ifco us avasthi guys is the right answer so uh, these are the pictures of nano urea and nano dap for which ifco is very famous so ifco is the first organization in the entire world to develop the nano urea and i have already told you this thing many times that india is heavily dependent on imports as far as the fertilizers are concerned and because of this uh, import dependence the fiscal deficit is also increasing and the burden on the government is also increasing and that is why the government is focusing on shifting to the organic ways of cultivation and also reducing the dependence on the imported fertilizers by creating these kinds of indigenous fertilizers okay so now we have the nano urea and nano dap okay apart from this we have the npks also which are the nutrients on which the subsidies are given which countries are organizing the freedom shield exercise a computer stimulated command post training south korea and us conduct this or uh, exercise together which country does nobel peace prize winner ls belatsky belong to so here belarus is the right answer guys this picture shows you the nobel peace prize winners of 2022 last year only ls got the peace prize along with the memorial uh, which is a civil rights group in russia and this center for civil liberties of ukraine okay now if you pay attention to the countries and if you are following the current affairs so you would know that all these countries are involved in the invasion of ukraine by russia okay because belarus is credited with helping out russia in undertaking the uh, invasion activities militaristic activity in ukraine okay so these all these three countries are related to the russia ukraine uh, conflict and the people who are fighting or raising voice against this have been given the peace prize for the year 2022 theek okay? hai 
Now, why is this person suddenly in news? Has he returned his Nobel Prize? No, that is not the news. The news is that Belarus has given him imprisonment of 10 years. Sad, but reality is this only. So, he has been given the uh, verdict of imprisonment. So, that was the news. Obviously, that won't be asked from you in the examination, but the question can be asked. So, pay attention to this thing. And also remember the organizations which have got the award with LS. Next question is What is India's rank in the Liberal Democracy Index as per V Dam's Democracy Report? So, India's rank is 97th out of 202 countries. Okay. So, here, guys, remember that the Lib the democracy report has these indices okay liberal democracy index electoral electoral democracy index liberal component index egalitarian component index participatory component index and deliberative component index so these are a total of six sub indices within one report okay and each of these sub indices you can clearly see have their own rankings and scores so i know that it is very tough for all of you to remember these indices particularly but consider it in this way that each of these sub indices are individual separate indices okay so it will help you in remembering these for uh, these better okay now as far as the rankings are concerned for each of these uh, indices so you just need to remember the top ranker and india's rank uh in case if your brain capacity allows you uh, to memorize then try to memorize top five at least guys please because sometimes it happens that the top five are also asked in the examination so if you can please remember top five because this is a very important report okay very crucial very important report moving ahead Recently, RBI launched two key surveys, Inflation Expectations Survey of Household and Consumer Confidence Survey for the month of March 2023. So, in how many cities these two surveys were launched? So, these surveys were launched in 19 cities. Okay, and uh, as you know that these surveys are launched for the month of March only and uh, therefore, their results are not important. Okay monthly data are not asked in the examination so we try to skip them but yes the static portion of these indices are important because rbi conducts this data or uh, this survey and second thing is that in the lengthy questions i am myself skipping out reading each and every word and paying attention to the keywords because the questions are created by me only and i am running short of time i just want to finish the session of 100 questions within 1 to 1.5 hours otherwise it will bore you guys okay so we are going to quickly finish up the session and i will not uh, i don't want to compromise on the information therefore i am skipping reading the full fleshed questions here but i would recommend all of you to read the questions completely and pay attention to the keywords in your interest only okay so here guys the south asia distribution utility network southern was launched by the ministry of power and uh, new and renewable energy minister rk singh southern is a joint initiative of ministry of power power finance corporation and an international organization so the right answer here is us aid okay <coughs> uh, Food and Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal has announced that the smart PDS system will be implemented across all the states in India and the basic idea of this smart PDS is that here the smart ration cards are issued to the beneficiaries and the ration is given through the fair price shops on the production of smart card ration card okay and uh, the question is asking you that what does M stand for in the full form of smart so M stands for modernization smarts full form is scheme for modernization and reforms through technology
in the public distribution system so this is the full form of smart and all of you have to remember the full form as well airs fellowship has been launched by india in collaboration with australia airs stand for australia india research students fellowship in this fellowship the students can go on each other's land and study from there why are the pyramids uh, where are the pyramids like structures known as moy dams located in india so guys here the right answer is assam why are these moy dams important suddenly the reason is that uh, unesco has approved this site to be the world heritage site center okay it, this site has been uh, in the list of unesco world heritage site center where is mina salman seaport located so bahrain is the right answer and you can clearly see ins trikand trikant here so it means that this ship has docked on this seaport that is why the question is here which edition of the middle east energy 2023 was organized at the dubai world trade center so here 48th edition was organized recently csir has announced to give the research grants to the women under csir aspire this scheme was about to be launched on april 1st but guys we have not received any information related to the launch of this csi csir aspire scheme okay if you go and search on the google you would find different websites which will show like apply for the csir aspire uh, scheme but as of now these schemes have not been this scheme has not been launched and these websites are not authentic websites okay so clearly we cannot say that it has been impl under implementation as of now but yes csir has announced the csir aspire scheme so obviously it will launch it sooner or later so the, th the thing here is that we need to pay attention to the amount which will be given to each and every individual for the research proposal okay uh, the total budget of a research proposal including research fellows stipend should generally not exceed the limit of rupees 25 to 30 lakh okay so for one research project this much amount will be given and you know that science related project are very uh, expensive okay they need a huge budget for uh, conducting their proof of concept us has handed over the nasa isro synthetic aperture radar which is called as disar to isro which aircraft of the us was used to transport the spacecraft to india so c17 is the right answer okay now guys first of all know this fact that in 2014 this uh, nisar concept was visualized by nasa and isro okay and uh, it is in, it is the world's first project in which we will have two frequency radars okay i'm going to show you that for your better understanding otherwise all these facts are not uh, very easy to retain okay so let's move to the picture itself so guys this is going to be the radar this is nisar okay so this is the radar and here this is the s band sar synthetic aperture radar so this is first radar which was developed by isro and here we have the l band radar okay synthetic aperture radar which is developed by the nasa okay so do remember which or uh, radar was developed by which agency because that is important for for your general understanding okay so that is all about this apart from this we are not engineers or astronauts that we need to go into each and every part of this spacecraft but yes remember this thing that this radar will be used to capture the images on earth okay for better view and both of these radars are going to give a very high quality images of the earth through this satellite so that is why this project has been launched and approved now in which year will this program be launched will this spacecraft be placed in the low earth orbit this is your question do tell me in the comment section below <clears throat> the 
Recently, the central government has launched the push pin initiative to ensure greater availability of power during the peak demand season. Where does what does S stand for in the full form of push? So here, guys, S stands for surplus. Okay, the full form of the push here is very, I would say, very strange. Okay, it's very erratic. Why? Because push se related hai hi nahi uski full form. The full form is. Hi, price day ahead market and surplus power portal. Now I don't understand why do the government creates why does the government create such kind of full forms? I mean, push se iska koi lena dena nahi hai. This is very <laughs> strange. But nevertheless, this is the thing which we have. We have to remember this from the exams perspective because you have clearly seen what kind of a question can be made out of this portal or this thing. Okay. <clears throat> Which state has launched Arogya Mahila Scheme, Women's Health Program to provide medical services to women at the health centers for free of cost? Telangana here, guys, is the right answer. Which state UT has begun the commercial cultivation of Muleti, licorice in English, for the first time? Now, what is the scientific name of Muleti? This is your question, okay? Do tell me or at least search for yourself. Uh, the right answer here is Himachal Pradesh. Now, if you guys are following the current affairs, you would know that Hing also for the first time was cultivated in Himachal Pradesh only. Himach uh, Hing is not cultivated in India at all. We need to import the entire Hing. Yes, Hing is also imported in India and this Muleti its cultivation happens in India but what has happened in Himachal Pradesh is that the commercialization of the Muleti's cultivation is taking place okay so this CSIR's Institute of Himay Himalayan Bioresource Technology has distributed the seeds of Muleti to the farmers so basically they are commercializing the production of <coughs> <coughs> sorry so they are commercializing the production, the cultivation of Muleti. And this is, guys, the reason for which we have mentioned the first time here. Okay. Because before this, something like that has not happened in India. But yes, Muleti is also not cultivated on a very large scale in, in India because it needs dry climate cold dry cold climate. Okay. So in the northwest and northwest region of India, we see here in this region of india we see the cultivation of muleti happening okay so in majority so dry cold climate chahi hota hai and the maximum temperature which is needed for growing muleti is between 2 degree celsius to 5 degree celsius in summers and in winters okay so that much is enough i guess which of the following states is implementing the Bhavantar Bhuktan Yojana for horticulture farmers? So here guys, Punjab and Madhya Pradesh, both of these are launching, launching the same schemes. Okay. Uh, so under this scheme, basically the difference in the prices, difference between the MSP and the price at which the farmer has sold. That price is paid by the government bhavantar that is bhav antar the difference in the price bhuktan is payment yojana which state has launched the livelihood cluster development initiative under the mukhya mantri janjati jivika mission to invest 500 crore for empowering tribal communities in the state so here odisha is the right answer How many districts are there in Madhya Pradesh? 53 districts are there. Uh, and recently, Mayur Bhanj was given the status of a new district. Okay. Which bank has launched the unpause initiative? 
a program designed to assist women who have taken a career break for any reason and now ready to return to the workforce so here guys ujwan small finance bank is the right answer okay from the u you can remember ujwan okay remember ujwan not union क्योंकि यू से तो यूनियन बैंक भी है यू से उत्कर्ष बैंक भी है तो रिमेंबर इट्स यूज उज्जवन स्मॉल फाइनेंस बैंक विच हैज लॉन्च दिस अनपॉस इनिशिएटिव ओके सो विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स इज आर इनकरेक्ट विद रिगार्ड्स टू दी एमएसएमई कंपेटिटिव स्कीम कंपेटिटिव लीन स्कीम ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लीन मैनुफैक्चरिंग इज बेसिकली रेफर्स टू द कॉन्सेप्ट वेयर वी रिड्यूस द कॉस्ट बाय रिड्यूसिंग द वेस्टेज ओके एंड इंक्रीजिंग प्रोडक्टिविटी दैट इज कॉल्ड लीन मैनुफैक्चरिंग सो हियर एम एस एम ई कंपेटिटिव lean scheme means increasing the competitiveness of the msmes by reducing their cost by reducing their wastages and increasing their productivity that's the basic idea now the statements are that under the scheme 90% of the cost will be borne by the center the scheme aims to give the hand holding and consultancy support to the msmes the scheme is divided into three parts so here guys all the statements are correct ओके द स्कीम इज सॉरी आई मार्क द रोंग ऑप्शन हियर नन आर इन करेक्ट ऑल द स्टेटमेंट्स आर करेक्ट सो नन आर इन करेक्ट एज अनाउंसड बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट द सेल ऑफ ओनली गोल्ड ज्वेलरी विद एच यू आई डी दैट इज हॉलमार्क यूनिक आइडेंटिफिकेशन नंबर विल बी अलाउड फ्रॉम फर्स्ट अप्रिल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री सो हाउ मेनी डिजिट्स आर देयर इन दिस एच यू आई डी सिक्सटीन डिजिट्स आर देयर इन द एच यू आई डी नाउ गाइज योर टास्क इज टू टेल मी हाउ मेनी डिजिट्स वुड बी देयर इन द आभा आई डी कार्ड विच इज द हेल्थ आई डी कार्ड डिजिटल हेल्थ आई डी कार्ड ओके In March 2023, the Honorable Union Minister of Power launched the Star Rated Appliances Program and the I Diksha Portal at the 21st Foundation Day of the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. What does D stand for in the full form of I Diksha? So D stands for decarbonisation. Ministry of Agriculture has approved three Center of Excellences for horticulture crops under the Mission for Integrated Development of Horticulture. You need to identify the correctly matched pair. Kamalam, Gujarat, Mango, Odisha, Vegetable, Goa. So, for Kamalam, the Center of Excellence will be opened in Bangalore. Okay. So, option this first. pair is wrong for mango it will be opened in odisha for vegetable it will be opened in goa so only two pairs are correctly matched okay lockheed martin uh The U.S. based defense and aerospace giant and Tata Group have signed an agreement to commence production of fighter wing ship sets at their joint venture Tata Lockheed Martin Aerostructures Limited, located in Dash. Okay, under the MOU, both entities will produce twenty nine fighter wing ship ship sets by twenty twenty five. So, where is this joint venture located? It is located in Hyderabad. How much is India's share in the global arms import during 2018 to 2022 as per the sipri trends in international arms transfers 2022 report 11% is the right answer <clears throat> look at this picture guys this is telling you about the 40 largest importers of arms in the world for two ten years 2018 to 2022 and 2013 to 2017 and clearly you can see that india's import de dependence has reduced by 1% although it's marginal but still a reduction is a positive sign for india because the lower our dependence on imports is the higher our revenues and everything are okay higher our self reliance is 
so india's share of global amber imports is 11% now the exporters top exporter is always us then russia uh, then france china and germany these are the top 5 uh, exporters of the arms <coughs> which of the following is the top most landslide prone area as per the landslide atlas of india so here rudraprayag is the right answer so guys the national remote sensing center of isro has launched this landslide atlas of india according to which these are the top 5 areas which are very much prone to the landslide okay so rudraprayag in uttaranchal tehri grewal uh, in uttaranchal these are the two most risky areas then we have thrissur then we have rajouri then we have palakkad which company has recently received the payment aggregators license from rbi in march 2023 so phone pay is the right answer i hope you have covered the payment aggregators topic thoroughly because now it is a very old topic okay many times this topic has been discussed where was the elephant sanctuary documentary shot i hope all of you know that this uh, particular uh, documentary has received the oscar the academy award for 2023 okay so where was this shot so it was shot in Mad mudumulai tiger reserve and this person kartiki gol service she is the director of this beautiful documentary now guys one more thing you need to know that the category in which this documentary has got the award so it has got the award in best documentary okay best uh, short documentary that's the category of this award natu natu has also got the award in, as the best original song one more thing that i want to highlight here is guys please pay attention to the singers and the choreographer of the song because you may never know what kind of question can be asked from you i hope you guys are not bored till now you are with me so you have to be you have to be a little patient okay because yahan se ab hum session ko bahut zyada kheech ke chalenge bahut zyada matlab अच्छे से फटाफट से सेशन खत्म करेंगे डोंट वरी अबाउट इट ओके बट यू नीड टू बी विद मी टिल द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन बिकॉज आपको पता ही है एक ही बार मिलते हैं हम पूरे महीने में ठीक है तो कवर कर लो यार अच्छे से करंट अफेयर्स एंड करंट अफेयर्स के 80 क्वेश्चंस हैं कहीं से कहीं तक आप छोड़ के नहीं जा सकते जी के ठीक है चलिए वेयर डेड मिनिस्टर फॉर रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड हाईवे नितिन गडकरी फ्लैग ऑफ इंडिया फर्स्ट हंड्रेड परसेंट मेथनॉल पावर्ड प्रोटोटाइप truck so bangalore is the right answer who is the secretary general of australia india trade association vinith rai which company has received the contract from ministry of defense for undertaking the refitting of sindhu kirti submarine so hindustan shipyard limited is the right answer which edition of la peros multilateral exercise will be held in the indian ocean region third india is also participating theek hai multilateral hai Which bank has launched the Blossom Women's Saving Account with seven percent interest rate with monthly interest credit? So it is Surya Udaya Small Finance Bank. देखो monthly interest credit होगा usually quarterly होता है but यहाँ पे monthly interest credit होगा which makes this scheme a unique scheme and I hope this will help you in remembering the scheme as well. So recently, RBI has granted the infrastructure finance company status to Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency. Okay. Now, which of these statements are correct? First statement says that IRE 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 is a mini ratna company under the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. IRE helps uh, in the achieving the five hundred gigawatt target of India by twenty thirty five. IRE is an NBFC set up in 1987 under the Society's Registration Act of 1860. So, which statement here is correct? <coughs> so, guys, only first statement is correct because the 500 gigawatt target is not by 2035; it is by 2030. Okay, ये तो पंचामृत targets में से एक है, which the Prime Minister announced during the COP26 of UNFCCC in Glasgow. 
and this guys is wrong because under the companies act of 1956 the idda was constituted who is the md of lic tablesh pande ugc launched utsah portal so u stands for <coughs> <coughs> undertaking so utsa refers to undertaking transformation through strategies and plans in higher education institutions okay this is the full form Ministry of Finance, uh, Minister of Finance Nirmala Sita Raman has announced that the government will continue the dash year interest free loans to state government for one more year. The enhanced capex of dash for infrastructure development is equivalent to three point three percent of the GDP. So it is guys fifty year interest free loan scheme which the central government announced for the states, and the total capex is rupees ten lakh crores. so aim of niti aayog has launched atl sarathi which is a comprehensive self monitoring framework to strengthen the atal tinkering labs it provides a monitoring and evaluation framework to enhance the performance of atls and in which state is the project launched that is the question so here guys karnataka gujarat andhra pradesh in all these states the project has been launched on a pilot basis okay so option e is the right answer government of india and world bank have launched the green national highway corridor project at a cost of rupees 1200 million not rupees 1200 million us dollars okay isko agar aap round figure mein yaad rakhoge it will be easier for you to remember now guys remember this thing that this is the total cost of the green national highway corridor project but out of this total cost 500 million dollars will be given by the world bank not the entire cost theek hai now which states will be the beneficiaries so guys all of these states will be the beneficiaries of this particular project Vote Fest 2023 was organized at Bangalore, and these are the chiefs of the Election Commission of India. Rajiv Kumar is the Chief Election Commissioner. First state to start the Resham Kit Bima Scheme. So here Uttarakhand is the right answer. Resham Kit is basically the uh, this. insurance scheme is for the sericulture farmers okay who do the sericulture sericulture is the farming of the silk which states celebrate the yaoshang festival manipur is the right answer madhav national park is located in shivpuri district of madhya pradesh yes districts can also be asked i remember that in one examination i guess rbi or the i guess in rbi only there was a question on rantham board Rantham board is uh, located in which district? Okay, Rantham board uh, national park is located in which district? So I guess Savai district is the right answer of this thing. I need to check it on, but check out uh, check on it. But this is sure that Madhav National Park is located in Shivpuri district in Madhya Pradesh. Now why is it in news specifically? The reason is that two tigers have been shifted in this particular national park. okay and uh, this might remember remind you of the kuno national park as well which is also in madhya pradesh where the cheetahs were reintroduced okay correct statement with regards to the basic animal husbandry statistics 2022 so here guys only second and fifth statements are correct as per the statistics the annual growth rate of meat production in india is 5.62% and the per capita availability of milk is 444 grams per day during fy22 which is increased by 17 gram per day over the previous year okay now guys these statistics are important for your esi also and if you are a nabard student so for ard also because this is going to be a part of your static ard awareness okay static agriculture awareness or the annual reports okay so do cover this report thoroughly from your exams perspective 
which country hosted the 19th bimstek ministerial meeting so thailand hosted the meeting which country hosted the 146th interparliamentary union assembly bahrain is the right answer now guys i hope uh, whichever country is coming in the news you are covering their background facts like capital currency the head all such things the location the countries which with which the particular countries sharing the boundaries so please remember such background facts these are also important these can also be asked in the examination previously also they have asked such questions recently the state owned lic has sold 2% in nmdc how much stake does lic hold at present in nmdc after this selling so 11.69% is the right answer which company introduced sustainable equity fund to invest in the esg activity so pnb metlife is the right answer so basically whatever investors uh, put in this fund that money will be invested in the companies which focus on the environment social and governance more okay so ministry of finance has amended the prevention of money laundering maintenance of records rules for widening the scope of know your customers to include politically exposed persons and uh, non profit organizations and do those dealing in virtual digital assets okay C cryptocurrencies okay and your uh, nfts non fungible tokens so through these also a lot of money laundering activity was taking place so now the government has taken a call and tried to regulate all these things okay so these are classified as reporting entities now the ministry says that uh, we have lowered the ownership percentage from dash to dash in our reporting entities for the purpose of pmla rules so a single owner cannot hold of uh, over and above 10% in these reporting entities okay so earlier the limit was 25% now it has been reduced to 10% who has been appointed as a united nation resident coordinator in tajikistan so kr parvati is the right answer international day of women judges march 10 no theme was there for that day WHO has given partnership for Healthy Cities 2023 award to Montevideo uh, out of these options okay so here guys you can clearly see there are five cities Athens Bangalore from India Mexico Montevideo and Vancouver these are the five cities which have got the partnership for Healthy Cities award okay so do remember from India it is Bangalore which has got this award Which Indian airport is mentioned in the world's top hundred airports, twenty twenty three? So Campe Gorda, which is in Bangalore, is mentioned here. Then we have Indira Gandhi Airport in India, uh, in Delhi, and we have the Rajiv Gandhi Airport in Hyderabad. All these three airports are mentioned in the world top hundred airport, twenty twenty three list of Sky Tracks. Okay. so do remember this thing and singapore's changi airport is at the number 1 position venue of 2024 world para athletics championships japan kobe is the exact location where this championship will take place first senior official meeting of the sai supreme auditor audit institutions <coughs> of the g20 engagement group under india's g20 presidency organized so where was it organized guwahati so a space commission delegation came into india and that was led by dr mohammad saud al tamimi so which country uh, from which country that space commission came into india so the right answer is uh, saudi arabia which country hosted the two day international conference of sco on shared buddhist heritage so here india is the right answer now remember that india is the chair of sco in 2023 okay india is the chair of g20 
in 2023 and there is one more important forum which is BRICS. So South Africa is the chair of BRICS in 2023. These three are very important regional organizations which remain in the news. Therefore, it is very important for you to remember their name. And as far as the G20 is concerned, guys, please remember the member countries of G20. You can be asked a question on that as well. Which state organized the third Divya Kala Mela? Madhya Pradesh is the right answer. You have seen that in, in the month of Ma March, Madhya Pradesh remained in the news a lot. Which state has recently given approval for 10% horizontal reservation to the statehood activist in the state government jobs? Okay, so here Uttarakhand is the right answer. Now we are talking about the reservation and we have this word horizontal reservation here. So let me just take a brief moment here to clear the vertical and horizontal reservations. Okay, so vertical reservation is basically the reservation which is given across the categories. For example, we have general category or the unreserved category. Then we have the SC category. We have the uh, ST category okay? and we have the OBC category so on so this is working horizontal sorry this is working vertically this is creating a separate vertical okay whereas in horizontal what happens within the these categories we have a specific category let's say for women okay so, आज मैंने ठानी है कि ये concept मैं आपका थोड़ा सा clear कर दूँगी। अगर आपका पहले से clear है तो well and good, otherwise listen, okay? So suppose there are hundred seats available, ठीक है? And uh, for SCs we have thirteen seats, for STs we have seven seats, for OBCs we have twenty seven seats, and the remaining are there for the under uh, unreserved, okay? For SCs we have the thirteen seats now. Uh, out of these 13 seats, if the government says that we have given the horizontal quota to women, let's say for three seats. So out of these 13 seats, three seats will be reserved for women and the remaining 10 seats will be there for the men. Okay. And the women. Okay. So the remaining seats will remain for both the genders, but three seats will be specifically for the women candidates. Okay. And similarly, if this 10% horizontal reservation has been given for the statehood act activist, that means that uh, within the general category only, now we have one more category. Okay. So suppose 50 seats were there. And if the government says that we are reserving five seats, 50 ka 10 percent 5 hota, 5 seats for the statehood activists so now 5 seats pe aap sif wohi log aayenge jinhone statehood activism mein participate kiya hooga thik hai to this is the horizontal and vertical uh, reservation although exam mein aap se poochha nahi jayega kahi bhi i guess but still for your general awareness it is important that you know the basic meaning behind the words which you are reading right news ke biche ka matlab pata hooga to easy hooga yaad rakhna uh, which Indian ship participated in the maritime partnership exercise with French Navy in the Arabian Sea? So here, Sahyadri is the right answer. Signature bank belongs to which country? USA. Silicon Valley Bank. Have you heard? Isko band kar diya, Silicon Valley Bank ko. And as a uh, ripple effect of this bank, you can say Signature Bank was also uh, closed. Theek hai? So we can see that Although the history does not repeat, but it rhymes. We can clearly see an effect of that happening here again. What is the value of e rupee in circulation as of February 28 as per the finance minister? So 130 crore rupee is the right answer. Okay, so this much worth of e rupee is in circulation in India as per the data given by the finance minister, which is restricted to February 28 only. Okay, do remember this thing. How much is the export of millet in India? 64 million dollar is the right answer. Which country received approval from RBI to open special rupee vostro accounts for trade settlements? Tanzania is the right answer. Tanzania ki capital currency background facts, please remember. Which company has backed the first green coast silver rating by CII for sustainable mining operations? So here guys, Hindustan Zinc is the right answer. 
थीम ऑफ द इंटरनेशनल फॉरेस्ट डे फॉरेस्ट एंड हेल्थ ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट मार्च इज द डेट नेपाल इंडिया लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल मेरठ इज दी राइट आंसर विथ स्टेट अनाउंस थाउजेंड रुपी मंथली असिस्टेंस टू एलिजिबल वुमेन हेड्स ऑफ द फैमिली विद इफेक्ट फ्रॉम सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री तमिलनाडु इज दी राइट आंसर उगाड़ी इज द हिंदू फेस्टिवल सेलिब्रेटेड इन विच स्टेट एज देयर न्यू ईयर सो इट इज सेलिब्रेटेड इन आंध्र प्रदेश कर्नाटका एंड तेलंगाना सो द राइट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ई Which country organized Elevate, a pitching series in Dubai for providing a platform for the startups? To connect with investors and global counterparts. So here UAE is the right answer. It's not UAE, it's India. India guys is the right answer. UAE is the country where it was organized. uh international day for elimination of racial discrimination march 21st rani girls hockey turf raibareli uttar pradesh so rani rampal ke naam pe this hockey stadium has been named and this is guys a very proud mo moment as a women and for our hockey team as also and for our sports fraternity also because uh, this is the first time in the history of indian sports that a stadium has been named after a women sports person okay so do remember this thing where did the inauguration ceremony of asia's largest 4 meter international liquid mirror telescope take place so devasthal in uttarakhand is the right answer world water day theme accelerating change date is 22nd march cpace center is set up at the indian institute of corporate affairs in haryana okay cpace is center for processing accelerated corporate exit that means the center is going to look into the matters of dissolution of companies okay so it is going to speed up the process of the exit of the corporates theek okay? hai India's first national center of excellence in green ports and shipping set up in Gurugram. Uh, which state launched the human driven initiative called Gajamitra that is the friends of elephant to check the rising incident of human elephant conflict west bengal is the right answer now guys uh, there is rehab project as well okay uh, which was pioneered by the kerala government so kerala uh i guess kerala or karnataka i am getting confused here guys please check it once which state has pioneered the rehab project now this rehab project is uh, being implemented pan india and the purpose of this is to use bees okay to shoo away the elephants from the railway tracks okay in order to uh, save their lives and we have seen that elephant whisperers the documentary has got the oscars so there are high chances that any of these projects can be asked in the examination so do prepare the gajamitra initiative the rehab project also which of the following places will have india's first pm mitra park that is for the textile so virudh nagar in tamil nadu is going to have the first pm mitra park so here guys this session ends i hope you have enjoyed the session thank you so much guys for watching the video and don't worry about the pdf it will be uploaded on the telegram channel have a good day prepare hard